I've been a little busy on something that I can't talk about. So I decided to take one of my evenings and play around with Ace Bright a little more. Game dev content takes a long time to make, so instead of doing that this week, I made this, and I'm going to show you how I made it. But before we get into the video, my name is Helper Wesley, I've made these games, and I make weekly devlogs. I started by framing out the scene or arena I wanted the character to move around in, and creating keyframes that were the positions that I knew I wanted the character to be in to create these punchy moments. So I wanted a sword slash, and I want them to jump and run into the wall, and then be midair, and then do this and do that. And these were essentially the frames that I was concrete in how they were going to happen. And then using the easing frames thing that I learned in my last Ace Break video, the frame just after a keyframe where something happens, and then you end up in the position that you meant to be in, without all of the forces that were involved in the impact. So like the sword swing, you'll swing further than you meant to go, and then you go back a little bit. And when you hit the wall, you hit the wall with a lot of force, and then you adjust, and things like that. And once I had the keyframes in place, then I made all the running to and jumping frames, reusing the one that I made in the bottom up in the top, because I made them once, I'm not going to make them a second time because that would be silly. And then I realized, or well, then I remembered, that I could have been using onion skin this whole time and it would have been a lot easier to do all of these things. So oversight fixed. I then tweaked some of the speeds of the frames and added a few more easing frames on things like the jump and spin attack, adding a frame where the character is falling down. What I'm trying to do with this is make it so that the action to get to the keyframe is quick and punchy, but then the recoil is slower and more intentional. So the jump from the ground up to the spin attack is instant, and then the falling back down takes longer. And that'll hopefully sell how fast these attacks are happening, that there's no frames in between the jumping and then the slash. And now that I've gotten to the point where I have a lot of frames going, why not just add a cloak to all the frames by hand all at the same time? My original intention was to have the cloak on the character from the beginning, but I kind of figured drawing the arms and legs would give you that positioning of where things should be under the cloak. So when I draw the cloak on over the body, I know where the arms and legs should be, which means I shouldn't get anything really weird happening. And as I was adding the cloak in, I started to really like it. It's not amazing, but it's pretty darn good. I went through each frame and kind of dragged the cloak a little bit in the opposite direction of where it was supposed to be, just to kind of exaggerate the motion a little bit. And then I wanted to fill in the scene because right now it's kind of plain, just some plants and things to give it a little more depth. And as I was placing the plants in the scene, or the shrubs I guess, I realized that they could kind of be moving with the character to help reinforce the force of their jumps and movements. I found it strange that I couldn't just copy and paste from that layer to all the other layers. I ended up copying and then pasting to every individual frame, and I felt like that was weird, but I couldn't seem to find a way to do that. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's a way to do that, because it was kind of tedious doing it that way. I would, I would like to know if there's a, a better way. Speaking of which, if you notice that I'm doing anything wrong in this video, let me know. I've been using a sprite for a couple of weeks now. I'm guaranteed to be missing something, or not understanding something, or not knowing a tool exists. I did though find the color replace tool, and I gotta say that is pretty cool, because it changes out the color you want for the entire scene. So if you get halfway through the scene and realize that your colors don't quite work or you want to change the color palette, you can just use that and it'll change all of the colors for all of the frames, and that's pretty cool. I then went through and started squashing and stretching the shrubs in the background to go along with the character as they move, starting with the slash down by the first target. And this of course was to emphasize the force of the attack, right? The sword is moving so quickly that it pushes all these shrubs away. And then when the character moves away and the sword is no longer in the way of the shrubs, they come back to their resting position. And then my computer decides to have a little heart attack and shut itself down. And while it's rebooting, I'm having a panic attack because I just spent like, I don't know, two, three hours working on that project and I just... Ah. <laughs> like, 
I don't think there's anything more frustrating than having to go back and redo work that you've already done. Thank God for whoever came up with these recovery features, because I can, ah, man, whew. How many times have I been saved by these auto saves and, and recovery systems? Like, God, they're great. However, I, I did notice that it didn't perfectly work. There were a lot of things that were wrong, but they were a lot faster to fix than having to restart the whole thing over again. So once I got those things fixed, I immediately saved and then got back to work. And these shrubs were really tedious. Like, I really should have planned ahead better and just not thought to do this or like contain myself and not overscoped a little project that I was going to do for a few hours and then ended up spending the entire night doing. But I really wanted to get this right. I wanted to make these shrubs stretch in a way that would really sell the the force of these jumps. And I even made it so that when they jump, there's little pixels of leaves flying off. So they kind of get pulled along with the character. And this is what I've got so far. I tweak some of the speeds a little bit to try to get it as good as I can, but uh, there's, there's just something wrong about it. So I sent it off to our Discord to have some people look at it and tell me what they think is wrong with it. And what I really appreciate from people is honesty and willingness to tell somebody that they've done a bad job. Thank you to everybody who playtests my games and looks at my terrible work in progress art and just, just thank you for being around. Anyhow, they got back to me and the biggest thing they said was that because there's so much motion happening on screen, there really needs to be more movement, which means more frames. And at this point I was, I, I'd spent more time on it than I wanted to. Like I said, I've got this very top secret thing that I can't tell anybody about happening right now, and I could only dedicate a little bit of time to this thing. So instead of adding a humpteen more frames, I decided to add a smear, 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 smear frame. I'm gonna go with smear. I decided to add smear frames where there would be a long distance of moving or a lunge. And this is basically a semi-transparent frame that is stretched along the distance they meant to travel. And I don't know if this is a standard thing, but I've also been making those frames half the duration of a regular frame. So say your regular keyframes are 200 milliseconds, I made my smear frames uh, 100 milliseconds. And I basically did this by putting the character in place and just literally stretching them out to the distance and then reducing their transparency and fixing any weird pixels that would have come about because of that. I did have a bit of trouble trying to cram these new frames in because I'd already gone through and changed the shrubbery behind it to match the frames that were already there. So basically I tried to make it so that the motion was so quick the shrubbery behind them moved after they'd already moved to the next frame. Hopefully I've got a clip I can show for that. Uh, the jump might be the best one. So they jump there's the smear frame, and then when they get to the top of the jump where they start to slash the sword, that is when the shrubs move. And that delay hopefully sells the fact that it happened really quickly. And because I couldn't quite get this climbing animation to work, I decided to make an oof frame. You saw it in the earlier animation, where they collide with the platform and then oof, and then awkwardly stumble up on top of the platform and then jump off like they, you know, they, they've lost their composure. So they start off really cool with these like smear frames and these crazy slashes and jumps and things and then it's a funny way to end the animation. And so yeah, this is the final version. Hopefully next week I will be back to working on Subway Hill. But for now, if you enjoyed this video, maybe click on that subscribe button. And if you want to talk to me personally, the link to our Discord is down below. It's called the Game Dev Fireside, and it's a pretty chill place to hang out and talk game dev. And if you decide to click on that link, then I'll see you there.